Hey, were you one of those kids who was too cool to own a normal animal like a dog or a cat and showed up to bring your pet to school day with a giant iguana? Did the Aragon book series play such a pivotal role in your upbringing that it birthed a lifelong dream of becoming a dragon rider and a ceaseless loathing for the abomination that is the movie adaptation? Well, congratulations! You might be a Drake Warden. But what is a Drake Warden? Well, saddle up and settle down because... There be dragons here. Dragons are everywhere nowadays. You got dragon shows, dragon books, dragon shows, dragon games, dragon shows, dragon food, and of course, dragon shows. Hell, you can't even compliment your partner's butt without mentioning that wagon they're dragon. So to capitalize on this, the Beach Witches, or whatever they're called, put out a book all about dragons. And it's pretty good. But some lunatic also took one look at a few hundred pounds of teeth and scales and said, yeah, I'm gonna pet that. And that's how we got ourselves a drake. But what is a drake? Well, unlike this one, or this one, your drake is a smallish green dragon-like creature that's still allowed within 100 yards of a school. But what does it look like? Sometimes a drake is dragon-like, sometimes more like a dog, and other times just a straight-up dinosaur. Which is nice in this case, as you can flavor your drake however you want, from the classic toothless to a giant chicken. And all we have to do to get this superb mount is take a bunch of levels in Ranger. Oh. Oh no. But first... Are you tired of your minis coming out jagged and hard to paint? Wouldn't you love to learn of a company that crafts their minis with the same love and care that you craft your adventures? Well, look no further than the Master of Miniatures. When searching for the perfect mini for your campaign, it's easy to get lost in the sea of tiny plastic that permeates the D&D landscape. But I'm here to tell you that there's at least one micro merchant who knows how to treat us right. Not only are you supporting a small business born from the tabletop fandom, but you're also getting the best quality for your well-earned dollar. The Master's Minis come fully assembled, based and clean, and ready to play straight out the box. But for those who enjoy funny glasses and finger cramps, they also come pre-primed and edge-highlighted for the easiest painting experience. Anyway, if you need a little more tiny tomfoolery in your life, head on over to this link at masterofminiatures.com and use the promo code you might be a d, d at checkout for 20% off. That also stacks with their multi-buy discount, meaning on seven items or more, you can get up to 40% off. And you don't have to be a rogue to know that that is a steal. So hit up that link in the description and tell them your buddy Yemba sent you. And a big thanks to the Master of Miniatures for sponsoring the show. Now, back to the video. Okay, so here's the tough part. Rangers still have a horrible reputation for being super underwhelming compared to other classes. You can compare them most to paladins being a kind of mix of cleric and fighter, with rangers being kind of a mix of druid and fighter. However, in most circumstances, it was actually just better to multi-class druid and fighter. So to compensate the sand sorcerers, what is their name? Gave the newest ranger subclasses some pretty slick abilities. However, I don't think that many people have been paying attention because even the Gloomstalker, who I adore, has had trouble shaking off that ranger stink. But what about the Drake Ward? Well, there's a lot to talk about, so let's speed past the boring part and get to the good stuff. At level 1, you get Favored Foe and Deft Explorer. Take these optional abilities because the originals are bad, with Favored Foe being a version of Hunter's Mark that scales with your class level, and Deft Explorer giving you the caniness of a rogue for expertise in one skill, because who knew Ranger's real class feature was plagiarism. You also get two additional languages because, uh, trees. Second level gets us a fighting style, and while I highly recommend archery, I can see an argument for dueling or two-weapon fighting, especially at early levels, but not thrown weapon fighting. Unfortunately, it still kind of sucks. Somebody make me a boomerang subclass, please. I've always wanted to play as Ty the Tasmanian Tiger. But we also get spellcasting, and while you're not the best combat spellcaster, you can cast buffs for you and your allies or summon creatures for additional support, which is kind of your thing. And at third level, we did it. We made it. We get primal awareness for one extra spell per spell level. Level. Wait, no, that's still bad. What happens at level 3? Oh yeah, we get a whole ass Pokemon to play with and we didn't even have to restrain a wild living creature against its will to win what essentially boils down to regulated dogfighting. No, instead, somewhere in your adventures you helped a mysterious creature or licked a shiny rock only to find out it bore a draconic essence. In doing so, you discover you've been granted certain gifts through this new connection. This gives you access to the draconic language so you can finally read that HTTYD fanfiction. I wouldn't. It's weird. But you also get the thaumaturgy cantrip to roar in a scary voice or do a drag favorite pastime, slamming open all the windows. But best of all, we also get our very own Drake. Stop that. And I mean, come on, who doesn't want a tiny dragon they can just have around? Your new little buddy has good stats and an intelligence of eight, meaning they can speak to you in Draconic and are still smarter than your average Twitch streamer. Is that King Arthur? And they can also fight by your side with a nasty 1d6 bite attack. But the best thing about your new little buddy is that they scale with your proficiency bonus and grow bigger and badder over time. 
I wasn't kidding when I said this really is like having your own Pokemon. You can even summon your Drake as an action once per long rest, or more if you spend a first level spell slot. Eat your heart out, Beastmaster. Have fun over there with your hawk or whatever. I just caught a Dratini and I didn't even have to fish in the Safari Zone for a week. Also, also, each time you summon your little buddy, you can choose a damage type between Acid, Cold, Fire, Lightning, or Poison, and your Drake becomes completely immune to that damage until you summon them again. So while you might melt under a Black Dragon's Acid Breath, he won't. So that's a huge level for us. And so far, I'm pretty much sold on the Drake Warden in terms of flexibility, flavor, and utility. Luckily, as we level up, it keeps getting better with extra attack. So at 5th level, we get 2 attacks and a bonus action attack from your Drake. But at 6th level, we get Deft Explorer, giving us 5 extra feet of movement to help flank with our partner and get that sweet advantage. We also get a climbing and a swimming speed, but while the climbing speed is nice, the swimming speed may not be that handy, unless you're a Dragon Rider Pirate? Oh, that'd be cool. No, it's mine. I thought of it first. But it's seventh level where we w wait. Who's that Pokemon? It's okay, so this might be my favorite part of the Drake Warden subclass as a whole. Your Drake actually evolves like a dingle dangle Pokemon becoming a medium creature and growing tiny wings so it can fly. On top of all of that, your Drake's bite becomes magical and does an extra 1d6 damage of the type chosen by its Draconic Essence, it gives you resistance to that type of damage, and you can ride your Drake like a big scaly horsey. While riding, you are too heavy for the Drake to fly around, but it makes mounted combat a breeze, letting you really live out that Aragon dream. 8th level gets us Land Stride so we can't get wrapped up by Audrey 2, 10th level gets us Nature's Veil so we can turn invisible for a turn as a bonus action, and we get yet another Deft Explorer ability with Tireless. As an action you can give yourself 1d8 plus your Wisdom modifier and temporary hit points which is a nice little boost, and you can recover from exhaustion on a short rest instead of a long rest, meaning the longest you ever get to sleep is 1 hour. Which just kinda sounds like how I live my life. But at 11th level, our Drake finally gets to be a real dragon with Drake's Breath. Now you can pick one of the elements from your Drake's Draconic Essence and shoot it at the enemy in a 30-foot cone for 8d6 of the chosen type. This ability uses your spell save DC and forces a dex save for half damage if they succeed. But the best part is the damage from the Breath does not have to match the type you choose when you summon the Drake. Meaning you can make the Drake immune to fire damage to fight a red dragon, but breathe lightning damage instead. You only get to use this ability once per long rest, but you can slap the dragon on the butt and spend a third level spell slot to do it again. And oh yeah, I almost forgot to mention. Not only do you and your Drake share one brain cell, but you apparently also share one stomach because you can fire off this breath as well. Either way you spend your action, this ability is huge, even outshining the Dragonborn's natural breath, but that's not that hard to do. 14th level gets us Vanish so you can hide as a bonus action which isn't super useful because we already have Nature's Veil to let us be invisible as a bonus action. But finally, at 15th level, our little buddy evolves into its final form. Your little buddy is now your big buddy as they grow into a large creature big enough to ride around on or carry all your stuff. Their little vestigial wings grow into big beautiful wings so you can finally fly your dragon and their teeth grow in nice and full, upping their bite attack to 3d6. But wait! Anytime you or the big boy over here takes damage, you can spend your reaction to give them resistance to that type of damage for one instance. Meaning your Drake can take a meteor swarm straight to the face, have full immunity on the 20d6 fire damage, and only take a quarter of the 20d6 bludgeoning damage assuming they made the save. All for the cost of just one reaction. And for those at home who know about the mounted combatant feat, well, your Drake can basically get away with zero damage on that kind of save. But wait, if you can believe it, there's even more! Because our Breath Attack actually also gets a buff to 10d6 here, making you and your Drake a defensive and offensive powerhouse zipping around the battlefield and raining death from above. And that right there feels like a capstone if I've ever seen one. I mean, at 18th level you can basically see any invisible creature within 30 feet, and at 20th level you can add your Wisdom mod to one attack or damage roll per round to add a little extra punch or potentially turn a miss into a hit, but, I mean, being best friends with a flying death machine? That's really hard to beat. So once again, I feel like I'm at a loss of words on a Ranger video. I really think it's wild that this poor class has had such a bad reputation for so long, but after looking at the Gloomstalker and the Drake Warden, I might be sold on at least these subclasses. 
My biggest complaint is not with the Drake Warden abilities, but with the Ranger abilities that seem like they add little to nothing or just don't mesh as well as they could have. However, as a person with a real love for Dragon Rider lore and way too many pets, I think the Drake Warden melds everything you want from this kind of archetype in the best way. In fact, I think this may be the best thing to come out of the Fizzbins book, and that had the Ascendant Dragon Monk and the Elder Brain Dragon, which I think are both sick as hell. So if you've ever had a pet Steve Irwin wouldn't mess with, can belt a burp so rancid it'll melt through solid steel, and will constantly annoy the party by flying overhead and blaring the Pokemon soundtrack, guess what? You might be a Drake Warden. Hey guys, big thanks for making it this far and watching the video. If you like this one, make sure to share it, especially if you know somebody who's playing this subclass. More subs are coming up on the poll very soon, so check that out, and until next time, have a good one, and I'll see you soon.